Let me ask you guys a question. When is a mini not a mini? Well, first and foremost, when it's a countryman, but more importantly, when it's the new countryman SE All 4, which designates that not only is this mini grown in size, I mean, it's about as big as a Volkswagen Golf, if not bigger, but the SE stands for the fact that it's all electric. Yep, this is the all electric countryman. And if you like electric vehicles, and if you like bigger electric vehicles, this may be the one for you because the last Mini SE was a little tiny Mini that was built in Oxford. And it was what you would think of as a traditional Mini. Of course, this new all four Countryman SE has grown considerably. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all the important numbers. How much it costs, how much range it has, how long it takes to charge, and of course, we're gonna sit in the front, go over all the uh, features. We're gonna sit in the back and see if, you know, a Mini Countryman that's all electric may be for you. Now, this carries about a $5,000 premium or so, a Countryman, if it was gas, would start at about 39,000. This starts at about 45. And if you add the bells and whistles, you can quickly get up to $50,000. Now it's got a 64 kilowatt hour battery. As you can see, it's got uh, not NACS, but CCS fast charging. It can charge up to 130 kilowatts, uh, which isn't exactly lightning fast, but with a 64 kilowatt hour battery, you may not have to wait that long. Now, the problem, of course, when you have a 64 kilowatt hour battery is that range can be a little bit lower uh, in many states that the official range on this guy is 212 miles. And as you guys know, if you're into electric vehicles, 300 has become kind of the standard for many electric vehicles. So 212 is not grand, but zero to 65.6 seconds, uh, which is not bad. And of course, you're getting a much bigger countryman. My mom actually has uh, the countryman from two generations ago, and this thing would dwarf that. So uh, being a big guy, let's see how I fit, and let's see what Mini has done to make this a little bit more, let's call it uh, big guy friendly. So first thing I want to do is I'm gonna I'm just going to turn this around so it's not facing into the sun so I can show you all the features uh, and I can kind of show you the interior and what makes this so mini like besides the fact that uh, over here uh, there's a little cubby that says mini directly on it so you know what you're into all uh, countrymen come in a dual motor setup if you're electric so that means they're all-wheel drive uh, there's also let me start her up there's this kind of fake key that you turn right there um, and then it springs to life and as you guys know uh, mini is owned by bmw so this is on the same chassis as the bmw x1 um, and um, i think that's a good thing now the last se the electric mini which is just a regular mini not you know not the uh, countryman not the crossover that was built in oxford uh, this guy is built in leipzig uh, so it does not qualify uh, for the current tax incentives unless you lease it uh, in which case, you know, you can build that into the lease. Now, uh, the way of BMW and the way of Mini is to get rid of controls. And as you can tell, they have done a good job of that here. I'm looking at this giant central display, uh, a little bit like a Tesla, except of course it's round, which harkens back to Mini's heritage. Uh, and then um, I, uh, do I have auto hold? I thought I had auto hold, but let's just put it in park. Uh, and then that'll make it a lot easier. So you've got this giant display, which tells you things like the state of the battery, 198 uh, miles of range, uh, your miles per kilowatt hour, uh, trip data, uh, amount of power you're using. Uh, and then you can scroll through this to kind of check out your mini. I love when actually the vehicle in the display is the same color as the one that I'm driving. I think that's always a nice touch. Uh, and then, um, You've got navigation, you've got voice commands, um, uh, your climate controls are in here as well, which I'm not in love with, 
uh, but if you touch the number here, it does become bigger, which is nice. Uh, and then this is interesting. Mini calls, is ex calls it experiences. I call it uh, drive modes. Uh, so let's check out the Mini Countryman all four experiences. So you start uh, with, uh, yeah, you start with trail, uh, which is unique to this. So uh, you do have a trail experience, which gives you things like the degree that you're on, uh, a giant compass. You know, is this an off-road or no? Is it nice that they have a trail experience? Yeah, I'll give them that. Uh, balanced, which is kind of more of your chill mode. Uh, and then you can go into, uh, that's a chill mode. So are you feeling relaxed? I, I know I'm feeling relaxed. <laughs> then you can go to timeless. Uh, that's the classic uh, mini display. And then of course there's music to go with it. So once again, you know, it's more old school, more classic. And then you keep going and you get to vivid that's more the party mode i don't want to hear that personal you can personalize things and if you're wondering what these experiences do green of course is you use less uh, energy in this guy i was going to say gasoline but there is no gasoline uh, and then beyond personal and green you got core which is the base one uh, and then you got the go-kart which turns it much more into a sporty ride Woohoo! so that gives you a tachometer sort of kind of like well maybe that's a speedometer why would this have a tachometer probably not uh, and then um, once again battery power um, so it you can personalize this and not just with the experiences but as you know uh, having been a long time mini owner we had the old mini se for a long time and i gotta tell you that was one of my favorite cars that we ever owned uh, it was just so well executed and, and i think the same applies to here you've got interesting use of material so you've got this leather uh, mixed with this cloth you've got this cloth dashboard uh, there's this interesting pattern up here uh, you've got this kind of let's call it down home heads up display because they don't display the numbers on the screen they do on, the, on this little plasticky screen which i believe is a little bit less expensive you've got your harman carmen radio that's very elegant uh on that control i do like that uh, and then um this funky power switch uh, to turn it on and off and then of course you've got a place here to charge your phone uh as well as two cup holders and this kind of funky little uh, mini cubby and I believe there's a movable armrest, which is nice. Uh, so, like I said, I mean, the, the biggest thing about this car, besides the fact that it's all electric, is that it's just so much bigger. Um, it's like they stuck it in the oven and it went poof. I mean, look at it. You can see that, right? It went poof. It just it just got much bigger. Uh, and, you know, oops, I didn't unlock the whole thing. Which brings up the question of, is a Mini that's not Mini still a Mini? And I got to think about that more. I mean, you certainly get more utility, but then you start to compete more directly with other premium small crossovers like the X1, which, like I said, this is built on the same chassis, but also competes against. Um, so uh, legroom, a little bit tight, uh, given that, you know, I'm 6'2". Uh, plenty of headroom uh, and uh, nice little rec reclined seats. Uh, and an armrest here as well, which is sweet. I love the armrest. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I could spend time back here. I could, I could definitely, if you move the seat up, uh, cross country this. And I'm curious to see, oh, by the way, I like this little light. That's very BMW. That is right out of the BMW hard spin. Because I just reviewed uh, the new X3 and it had that identical control. I wonder if these are reclinable. I can't tell. This is my first time in this vehicle, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm kind of learning about it along with you. I do like uh, this kind of gold on the red. You definitely know you're driving a countryman. Uh, big space back here, once again, 80, 20, 80, which is nice. And is there anything hiding under here? A little cubby uh, in this space, unfortunately, is taken up by the rear motor, so you do have a little bit less space in the electric countryman and that's because uh, there is a motor back there so we're looking at a dual motor setup which is uh you know fine it's kind of the natural setup for electric vehicles my seatbelt on and then you may be wondering how much horsepower and the great thing about electric vehicles is instant torque and lots of it and lots of horsepower and this mini will not disappoint we're looking at uh 308 horsepower Whew. 
pretty good. Uh, turn the fake key, one of the few controls, uh, and put it in drive. And by the way, uh, the more you click this down, uh, the, the higher region level. It actually has up, up to three region levels, which I think is pretty cool. So if you like, if you like uh, one foot driving, which I'm a big fan of, sorry, it's getting the videographer's way, uh, then uh, this might be the mini for you. All right, let's get it on the road. Take a quick uh, ride up and down the road here. I'm here in um, Spartanburg, South Carolina uh, at the BMW factory. And as you can see, I have a lot of cars to drive and review, including that M4. Oh, that's a beautiful color. I am a sucker for that light blue color. Um, so a lot more minis there. And we'll, we'll also uh, take a ride after this review in the gas powered one so that uh, if you want to compare it, uh, you can. Look at that. Huh? That is a, uh, I believe that's the Neue Klasse that is uh, clad. Oh no, that's the new uh, clad. There you go. Uh, X1. Sorry, wrong thank about you, that. Roman. Yeah, thank you. You're all set. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'm not going to be long. Yeah, so BMW brought uh, myself and a bunch of uh, journalists out here. Uh, we celebrated 30 years of the factory the other night. Uh, BMW dropped some pretty impressive numbers as employees uh, 11,000 people and they're building a new battery plant. Uh, so, this is the biggest employer apparently in the state of South Carolina. Uh, Obviously, it's been here 30 years. And I asked a trivia question in the previous video, and I'll ask the same one for you guys. Can you name the first vehicle that was built here at the Spartanburg plant? You probably plant, or as BMW calls it, uh, plant Spartanburg. You probably know that this is where BMW builds most of its crossovers now. But I'll give you a hint. The first car, first BMW that was built here was not a crossover. All right, uh, so let's floor it. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that sound. That's all fake. Is it going to ding at me because I exceeded the speed limit by like four miles an hour? It didn't ding at me like the X1, X3 did. Who would have thunk? I hope I can, I'm sure I can turn this sound off. It can get annoying. I mean, I am not in a Star Wars movie, so I don't necessarily need uh, the sound of fake electric noise. Uh, maybe if I get out of uh, go-kart mode. Let's try that. Let's just put in core. Come on. There we go. Did that get rid of it? Nope, that did not get rid of it. Oh, maybe, maybe that got rid of it? Nope, it's still there. Um, I'm sure there's a way to disable that, but like I said, this is my first time in this car, so um, while I'm driving and filming, I don't want to mess with it. Um, you know, there is often a question uh, that many automotive journalists ask, uh, which is silly. If you're a truck journalist, and of you know, we've got a drive and truck channel. And that question is, how does a truck drive, right? And the answer is, it drives like a truck. I mean, the real question is not how a truck drives, but how does a truck tow? How much does payload does it haul? And I kind of feel the same way about electric cars, right? When you ask, how does an electric car drive? Uh, the fact is, it drives like an electric car. Instant torque, one pedal regen. There's, um, you know, it's hard to distinguish one electric car from another and this is something that the manufacturers see if I can open that this is something that the manufacturers are going to have to wrestle with because you know why would you buy this mini se over you know pick your favorite electric car when they all really basically drive the same uh, and i don't know the answer to that question there are smarter people than me working on it uh, but the one thing I do like about the way that electric cars drive is that they're very quiet. Uh, they feel more solid uh, than their gas brethren. And I think the reason for that is because they have a lower center of gravity. Look, I have a, just a little bit of space, but because I'm an electric car. Oh, wow. Like I said, I'm in Star Wars. <laughs> I can just zip on by and, uh, you know, accelerate without causing any buddy behind me hit their brakes. So let's see what the navigation looks like. Is that how I go to navigation? Yeah, there you go. That's pretty cool. Uh, some of the complaints from the European press have been about uh, the central display. 
The problem being that, you know, a, a circle isn't exactly great for a screen. So you, you're, especially if you're displaying square things in a round sphere, you're wasting a lot of space. But I kind of find it uh, interesting and kind of fun uh, and kind of different and kind of uh, unique to have a round screen. Like I said, this does go back to the Mini Heritage when this used to be the speedometer uh, for a lot of the classic minis. Uh, and um, I kind of like it. But let's get back to this debate I'm having with myself and with you. And that is, you know, how do you distinguish an electric car from another electric car when they all kind of uh, drive the same? And I was getting to the point that they feel more solid. Uh, they have a lower center of gravity because they have this battery, uh, which also makes them heavier, which also makes them feel more solid. And I don't want to get into the politics of it uh, because, you know, until you've driven one, I hate to see comments saying electric junk uh, because they do really work well in my experience. And I've driven, I think, every electric car out there. They do really work well in the city. I mean, th this would be a really great little runabout if you needed to go pick up the kids, go get groceries, uh, go to church, wh whatever you have to do. You just jump into it if you've got a charger uh, at home and now apartment buildings and condos are starting to get chargers i'm seeing more and more of that you can charge it up overnight it charges at about nine uh, i'm going to say the wrong number so i'm not going to say it but it you know it's not exactly super fast charging uh on level two but you can charge it up overnight pretty easily zip around run your errands uh with this much space actually you know fit home depot stuff in the back maybe um uh, and uh, charge it up again and, and in that in that use case scenario, which let's face it is the use case scenario that most of us live under, because even though we all buy cars, what we think we're gonna do with them, which is of course, uh, drive this across country to California, which will never happen, but yet people buy cars because of that thought. The fact is electric vehicles for kind of everyday use are just much easier to live with. And one of the reasons they're much easier to live with is there's no maintenance. Uh, with regen braking, I've never actually had to touch the brake on this entire journey, which is short, but let's say I don't have to touch the brakes, I have to replace the brakes. The only fluid that there is to change is a windshield wiper fluid. Um, it's just, you know, a much more convenient, I think that's the best word for electric cars. They're just much more convenient compared to internal combustion engines. I didn't say they're more fun. I didn't say they're more emotional. I didn't say you know, they were more rewarding to drive. I just said they were much more convenient. And at the end of the day, you know, if you're living in America, we love our convenience. So uh, whether, you know, your politics are such that, that you hate electric, I would say give it a try and you may find that uh, you may like it. Hi, welcome back. That was Hi, quick, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Here, I'm all for yep. You. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Of course. Now, so before I end this video, I just want to show you, uh, uh, some of the other cars uh, that I'll be driving, hopefully. Um, so right now we've got all the generations of the iconic, dare I say, X5. Uh, we have another electric car over here. Uh, this is an interesting colored Spectre. Uh, and then over there hiding in the corner are the, uh, I believe those are the M5s. Uh, and if I'm lucky enough, uh, they have here the M5 Touring, which is now a plug-in hybrid, uh, you know, heavy, fast, silent or loud, depending on which powertrain you use. Uh, but the Touring is a forbidden fruit. Of course, that's a station wagon that we have not been able to drive. Anyway, guys, as always, this is Roman saying thanks for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you like the fact that uh, Mini has uh, made the uh, Countryman much less Mini? <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Uh, ciao. Let's go home here. There we go. Bye.